So we're going to begin with singing. Africa, you're going to learn my three words in Swahili. Oh, wow. And in Africa, I am told, most of the time when people sing, they stand up. Mm -hmm. So everyone's got to stand up. Get your lungs moving here. And the words are very simple. It's Imana ni zize alleluia. Imana ni zize alleluia. It simply means God is great, hallelujah. Imana ni zize alleluia. And it simply goes, Imana ni zize alleluia. Imana ni zize, alleluia. That's all. Imana ni zize, alleluia. Imana ni zize, alleluia. Imana ni zize, alleluia. Imana ni zize. Hallelujah. Now divide here. You guys do the first half and they answer you. Iman needs ease. Hallelujah. Iman needs ease. Hallelujah. Iman needs ease. Hallelujah. Iman needs ease. Hallelujah, Iman and Easy, 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 all together, Iman and Easy. Hallelujah, Iman and Easy, Hallelujah, Iman and Easy, Hallelujah, Iman and Easy, Hallelujah. Yay! I mean, Katie, you can't stand still. I was going to say, Del, we're going to have to start the line. And you would do that for about an hour. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have a report. Our report this morning is actually through our treasurer. And our good news is that we broke even. Yahoo! Now, there is, I actually am not very surprised by that, but I'm sure there are people among our interim committee who are somewhat surprised. Um, because we actually had a rule with, uh, uh, basically we had a rule that anyone who needed a scholarship got one. We didn't even know in advance how many of those there would be, there would be and there are quite a lot. Um, and, but in fact, we broke even, which Yay. was amazing. Now, we however have to still pay off the cost of the mold and uh, the cost of our 501c3 so we were able to accept your money. So that, please buy a lot of t-shirts. Yes. That will, that will we'll help us more. a lot. You need run more. We run out, we'll get more. Right. So <laughs> buy t-shirts, buy t-shirts for your friends, take them home, etc. Et et buy two or twenty. Or buy two earlier or or, or early and often. <laughs> okay, and give the money to me. Okay, so that's enough on that front. How much do shirts cost? Shirts cost twenty dollars. All shirts? All shirts are twenty dollars. So with no further ado, I turn it over to Sue. And I might talk about um, things that are necessary for overseas travel. And the first thing I think is a good sense of humor and sort of a, an easiness about just going along with the program, uh, whatever it is. And Dell is much better at that than I am. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Although, um, I, I manage. I think it's a skill that grows on you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, another thing is is that you need a way of entertaining yourself without electricity. You need, um, partic particularly if you're going to a country where English is not an easily um, known language, you are on your own for hours. And um, so whether it is 
cards or uh, writing music or writing letters. Uh, internet access is always available but not uh, not uh, fast <coughs> internet and not in large chunks of time usually. So what kind of games do you recommend? Oh, uh, Uno. <laughs> Uno. Mancala. What? Wait, got anything to do with dice? Yeah. Come under the same category? Yes. Actually, Mancala is a gambling game too though. Oh yeah, I know, but the yeah. kids play that. Yeah. We actually had really wild and crazy gin rummy games, or like uh, old maid games, because they were pictures of <laughs> animals and things like that, and it had it had nothing to do with gambling. Yeah. Games of concentration, um, the the kind that you play with cards, where you try to pair objects. And the exception to that is in Arab countries, dominoes. In fact, that's how pe that's how men get together in the evenings. Mm -hmm. They backgammon. drink tea and play backgammon and dominoes. Yeah. How about chess and checkers? Yeah. Those Not are okay. Not <laughs> everywhere else I've heard. Yeah. Well, really, uh, because of the king. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Sure is, <laughs> we, yeah. we brought a, a Jenga set, you know, the, the blocks that you build on, and in the beginning everybody just watched us play because they couldn't figure out why we were piling things up to take them apart. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it actually got to be quite addictive, and, and so they yeah. would start playing it with anything that they could find. They would go gather sticks out, and they'd start trying to build a tower, and then they'd try to take it apart. So, you know, it, it, once the object of play was clear, then things that were outside their culture were acceptable, but it, it had to be that clearly play. And I was su Jenna? surprised. Um, I think they're, one of the boys had it here just a few minutes ago. Um, in, in one of the villages in Burundi, we saw the kids actually playing jacks with stones so that the, the stone wasn't bouncing. But they had very similar hand motions to what I played in the third grade. So uh, jacks and marbles, um, if you want to take them, are, are, and bouncy balls are, um, are great. And of course, always every place soccer balls and yo-yos are, are really fun. But I, we try not to give away a lot of stuff because we're planning on going back and we don't want Thousands of kids yelling, Mazingo, yo yo. <laughs> we, we found that if we had a lot of kids in our, that were following us, jump rope was, didn't matter what, oh, yeah. what yeah. gender, yeah. Um, that was. Oh, was you see parents out doing yeah. that. Yeah, you see all I, ages. I actually use jump ropes as a cheap stress test. Uh, for people with there you go. Cardiac exactly. Disease, so it's, it's, really, it's, it's very catching. When they, <laughs> when they think catching, <laughs> yes, they fall over. Find a shot. Missed that one. <laughs> In, um, <laughs> Most countries have copy machines of some sort that you can copy the uh, sanitation and make it into a handbook. Uh, we used to carry sleeves with us <coughs> to put in a notebook, but um, re more recently, most large cities have pay pay companies that make this binding for very reasonable. And so uh, we've stopped taking sleeves except for what we want. And we just look around for someone to do this. If, if you can't find a binder, um, there's, um, you can make holes in, yeah. and put it in a book. And but every student gets one of these. And that's our, our and, teaching and, book. And uh, so that after a, a class, they can go out and start relating to their neighbors about what they've just been learning in class, and, and they really do it. And, uh, they, and they take a great deal of pride in something like this that they've been given. 
I take my MP3 player full of my songs. Um, sometimes it's hard to get it recharged, just depends on, on where we are, but at least I have some hours. And I usually use it in the middle of the night when I'm not sleeping. But um, I take my Bible and one usually inspirational book that I know that I want to read more than once. <coughs> so um, I'm sure everyone else has a, a different list. Um, mm -hmm. I take chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and beef jerky. So, uh, so one other yes. thing that, that we found really useful is, you know, you can get in the hobby stores little folios that will hold about 10 to 20 photos, you leave tiny mm -hmm. little things. Um, we've encouraged everybody who's been a volunteer with our program to bring one with pictures of their life, their friends, their family, and things that are good. Even if you don't speak yes. English, mm -hmm. it's a phenomenal way to, yes. to open yourself up to the community yeah. and and you find ways to talk about things even though you don't share a language. Yeah. And they really like to see your it's family. It's huge. They mm -hmm. just want to know where you came from and a bit about who you are. And so and the fact that I lived on a boat was more than most people could deal with. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> water! Now, I found this reading material especially important in, in India. And I've been doing it for years. I, and you can buy books are easy to buy in India. Um, I've always gotten copies of Indian epics. The Ramayana, the Mahabharata, mm -hmm. uh, different translations, and in the south, the Shilapadakadam, which is a, a great epic of Tamil Nadu. And once you know those epics well, you find they are actually, you didn't notice it before, but they're always popping up in conversations. Or you know, references often pop up in conversations where you'd never expect them. And so I have found over the years, my understanding of these epics have deepened mm -hmm. um, as I've just been it's, part of daily yeah. life. It, it's, Molly, it's, Molly, it's, Molly, it's, it's as important as the Bible to Western culture. Yeah. So. Right. And they're long and they're yeah. interesting. And yeah, they're, they're, they're all, they're full of great stories. They're so. full of great stories. So, <laughs> and, and that's probably true in a lot of other cultures. Mm -hmm. well. uh, um, I happen to have markers, but I take colored pencils at Walmart right now. They're a dollar. <laughs> and I stock up. And then I take them out of here and just put a rubber band around them because rubber bands are very useful to keep mosquito nets in place on your and uh, for other things like shooting. But uh, <laughs> but they have no markers or very few markers or um, color uh, color crayons sometimes melt. It depends on where you're going. So I just take colored pencils, and there's a whole some educational things that color pencils, why I use colored pencils instead of markers. But um, uh, another thing is you need, need to take two or three Sharpies, because there are some materials that permanent markers are the only ones that really show up, like the diffuser plates that we'll talk about later. So I, and for as, ma as many projects are we, we are doing, I multiply it by two because probably you'll lose. And, and you need to leave one there, but I tell one person, you are in charge of this marker, because there's no, there's no way they're going to get another one. Um, flashlights, um, I think it was Home Depot, someplace that had 10 for a dollar, and they worked. I mean, 10 for $10. Yeah, 10 for $10, that's a little <laughs> bit more reasonable. And they were like the um, LED, LED. LED ones. I yeah. mean, they were really cool. And they make wonderful gifts. They don't have any torches like that. And so, uh, and, and you will need a torch. Um, of course, some sort of bug repellent. In, in most places, um, women are expected to wear at least skirts uh, below the knee and not to have their upper, I mean, this is fine, but not sleeveless, but, uh, not sleeveless and certainly not a tank top. Although in Burundi, that was okay. I don't know why. It, it will vary country to country. Yeah. yeah. In India, pants are fine, but, right, pants but are always fine. Below, below the knee. Always yeah. below the knee and never tank tops. We, Ali and I remember the, the, the yeah. LDS woman. Yeah. LDS, after the tsunami, had sent a mission there, and there was this woman who was giving out vaccinations at the quote orphanage, which wasn't really an orphanage, uh -huh. but uh, she was wearing a tank top and 
Who was just shocked? <laughs> and in Tanzania, you would never wear a sleeveless, a woman my age would never wear a sleeveless shirt with a skirt, but you might have a dress that was made sleeveless or a two part <laughs> that was made, and that was okay. So it, it really is about the casualness of it, and, um, and but you'd also be traveling with a, a conga or a shawl that you could wear over if you stepped someplace, and I'm sure in other countries it's a scarf that you could put on to be more modest. I mean, that's really the issue, and it was phenomenal the way it changed the way people dealt with me when I was traveling through the, from one part of the country to another, that, that I was, I was clearly a Mzungu, I was clearly an other, but I was approachable and I was tolerated if I was being um, modest in my appearance. Without necessarily taking, I mean, I wasn't wearing things down to the ground, but I wasn't wearing shorts, I was wearing skirts and I was wearing, um, and I was showing respect for their, for their culture and how they expect people of my age to be. And it, and it will differ in different, even within different parts Absolutely. of Muslim countries. Yes. Uh, do you ever need any advice on that scene? Well, and the other thing, it's better to err on the side of being conservative than the other way. And, and in most places, you can have made or buy clothes. It's, you know, like, it's not a big deal. Um, the other thing that it's fun to take are gadgets. I don't know what else to call it, but like folding knives or the, what do you, the multi-tool thing. Have, Leatherman. Yeah, Leathermans. But the, the copy Leathermans that aren't, very expensive, but are still good. Yes. What about like uh, juggling balls or something? Like oh, that? that'd be but wonderful. They would yeah. love that. Yeah. They 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 like they like frisbees, flying yeah. discs. Oh, frisbees are great. Now, I've Basically, taken, things that people like here. I mean, get yeah. people yeah. are people everywhere. Exactly. I took uh, uh, a gross of uh, little super balls yeah. one time, <laughs> and oh golly, one day I. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking down the street and two little girls came up to me and I said, Mister, do you have what, any more of those little golf balls? <laughs> and so uh, I went back to the house and got them something. And oh boy, talk about happy. And the other thing that we have found very consistent with um, India, Kenya, and Burundi is dollar store glasses. Yes. They can always use yes. reading glasses. Always, mm -hmm. always, always. And in our boards is a picture of a lady with glasses with a little tag on it. And she was literally crying because she could read again. Yes. It had been years since she could read. And the delight on her face for a dollar. So you don't need to call, I mean, you could collect glasses, but just dollar store glasses. And, um, <coughs> Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I took them to the, the Dalit community in in, in Kutur. It was amazing, mm -hmm. just extraordinary. And you took them after we took them, yeah. and and still you could take a hundred pairs more right. and not yeah. never run and, out. And we took them to the. We actually were giving them to some of the faculty. These are people that I would have assumed had access or could have gotten, yeah. and and they didn't. You know, they yeah. had, so the need for that is is phenomenal. The other yeah. one that we taught people to do is. <coughs> We would bring over clothes and leave clothes. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I oh, went yeah. back with empty bags, not always because I lost them. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and glasses over there are cheap as far as we're concerned. We're concerned, but it's not. Yeah, and uh, thirty-five dollars you can get a, you can get replacement glasses, you know, and uh, but they're all ground in India uh, when we're in Burundi, anyway. And uh, but uh, goodness, but. For those people, thirty-five dollars is a big deal. Uh, only the people in the city can afford that. Well, a lot of people worry about the food, and first time I went to Kenya, I have to tell you that I did not take a bite that I didn't pray over. <laughs> uh, on my third trip, which was this summer, I was not quite so fanatical, and I have never. I am sicker now than I ever been in India or in. No, not, that's not true about India. <laughs> in Kenya, in Burundi. Um, I ate something, in, I came into contact with something in India that I am fairly allergic to, although it is the outside of my face that swelled up and not my throat. But that was a little scary. <laughs> don't, eat, it, don't 
don't eat raw fruits or vegetables that can't haven't been peeled. Um, even yeah. in fancy restaurants. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Learn yeah. careful to... about. Be very careful about anything with ice in it, because mm -hmm. it's usually uh, not f purified water. That's how I got hepatitis. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah. there are very few ice cream places that you can go to, but you have to be really, really careful. Okay, the fruits and vegetables on the outside. Yeah, because the, the outside, even if it's been washed, it's been washed with dirty water. And uh, yeah. so then after they yeah. peel it, though, you peel it with this handle? hand and you eat it with this hand. <laughs> yeah, my, my daughter just got back from India. She had no trouble in rural South India whatsoever, living with, in, in very, very rural areas. And she went to a fancy restaurant in Mumbai and had a salad and was immediately sick. Yeah. Okay, but if you... I'm oh, sorry. Give examples of what you... Jonathan. Jonathan. I, I have quite a bit to say about this, actually. I would, I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah. come on up. Come on up here. Come on. This, the, thing, the public health dangers to travelers in, in third world countries are pretty... There's actually a lot of data about this. Good. Um, and there, the, the three rules summarize to um, don't get hit. That's the first one. Because the, the number one cause of mortality overseas is automobile crashes. So reliable driver, reliable vehicle. It's not always available, but it is worth trying to find one. Yes. And find someone you trust to drive in a vehicle that you think will actually huh? make it. The road conditions are poor. If you get into a crash, you will. there is no trauma center. Yeah. Um, so, number one, don't get hit. Number two, don't get bit. Um, snakes, bugs, uh, especially mosquitoes in Africa and India. Um, dengue, chikungunya fever in India, um, malaria uh, in Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. Um, and sand so fleas in the Middle East. And sand fleas in the Middle East, which mm -hmm. transmit leishmaniasis. You, you want to keep the bugs away from you. So, longer clothing than the weather seems to merit is a good idea. Um, and bug spray is a good idea, and mosquito nets are an excellent idea. Night, uh, you'll get malaria from night biting mosquitoes, so you only need to worry about the mosquitoes at night if you're worried about malaria, but you'll get dengue or chikungunya fever during the day. So, is that in Africa or in... Chikungunya fever is Indian, but there, are, there is an equivalent um, arboviral infection in Africa. Um, so in general, you don't want to get bitten by mosquitoes um, because of the public health risk, not because of the, the itchy bite. So don't get hit, don't get bit, and don't eat shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is where the question is hard silence is useful. Okay. Um, so the, the third thing is you don't want to eat fecal material. And fecal material comes in water and in food. It comes from people's hands. I think somebody mentioned that hand washing will ablate yes. about 40% of all uh, of all fecal oral transmitted diseases. So you can't trust the hands of anybody, and, um, including your own, if you don't wash them. So you, you want to peel it, boil it, or not eat it, basically. So you peel it in front of you. Um, you see it peeled in front of you, or you cook it in front of you, or you don't eat it. There are methods of uh, decontaminating fresh vegetables with chlorine or iodine. Um, it, they say that it doesn't taste bad. It does taste bad. You can taste it. Um, you, you can get used to it, but honestly, it's not worth it. You can live without lettuce. Most of you are not going to be traveling for, a long, for the long term. You know, uh, David goes to India for, for months at a time, for half a year or a year at a time. In those circumstances, you want to decontaminate lettuce. But if you're going for a month I, lettuce, I won't eat it. I simply won't eat it. No. Which most of you are going to be going, it's just don't eat those things. Just you'll be, things you'll be better off. I, I should probably shouldn't say this because God will strike me for it. But then, um, I, I don't, that isn't really my theology. But, um, <laughs> the, the, um, up till now, the last time I was sick um, from food that I ate overseas was in Mexico in 1980. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was, that was uh, eating bar food. So it, I deserved it, basically. <laughs> um, the, so if you're careful, you will not get sick. You really can prevent diarrheal illness, which, which really wrecks your vacation. So don't eat stuff that isn't peeled or cooked. That's, and don't eat stuff who's, that have been touched by hands that you don't trust. Or if it doesn't quite taste right. And be biased towards eating yeah. less. Yeah. And just, yeah. just eat less than you normally do. Having said that, <laughs> You're going to be guests in people's homes, yeah. and you cannot turn down food mm -hmm. that somebody has prepared for you with their own hands in their own home. 
Uh, all of this goes out the window when it's a question of accepting hospitality. So is that an emodium moment? That's what I was going to ask. If it's cooked, you're probably in a Purell if lifestyle. Yeah. You, you should wash your hands. You should definitely make sure the quality of your water, as we've, we've been talking about obsessively for the last three days. Um, but there's, in terms of prophylactics or stuff to take, uh, to prevent disease after you've already, there's no morning after pill for diarrhea. Um, the, the, um, what, you, what I would recommend doing is carrying, did I say something funny? No. <laughs> yeah. What I would it, it recommend doing. Uh, it's truth, yes. The, the single medicine that I would recommend taking is Pepto-Bismol. Mm -hmm. Because Pepto-Bismol is a generic antidiarrheal, it's a symptomatic antidiarrheal that does not plug you up. Think about what diarrhea is. It's an inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. So if you give yourself a medicine to plug you, yourself up artificially, most of them are opiates, um, what you're doing is you're, you're, taking a, you're taking a sewer and converting it into a cesspool, right? So you're blocking it up. That's not what you want to do, ideally. Sometimes you have to do it if you're on a long bus ride or something like that for practical reasons, but it's not a good strategy. Pepto-Bismol doesn't do that. Pepto-Bismol adds bulk um, and is toxic to most pathogens. So it's a good thing, it's a good generic medicine to have with you. Some travel physicians prescribe uh, medicines, usually quinolones, uh, for diarrhea. I really discourage patients from doing that because quinolones have risks of their own and they, tend, they select very rapidly for resistant organisms. And you may hurt somebody else by taking that medication. So I don't, I don't recommend prophylactic antibiotics. I recommend Pepto-Bismol. Um, of the other ones, Imodium is probably the best, or Kaopectate are benign um, antispasmodics and bulk agents. I would stay away from things that actually plug you up. So I would stay away from low modal. I would stay away from uh, anything with an opiate in it. Yes? Um, I, have, I have one experience when I was staying with my host family in Costa Rica where they all went out for, uh, for a dinner to see another student off. And uh, I was the the host mother prepared uh, food for me, just me. She prepared me a special meal. It was the meat from the back of the fridge, and it, <laughs> I think it was chicken. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but it had been there for a long time. Chicken and E. coli sauce. Much, yeah. 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 Much I gathered. And uh, it, uh, it, it just don't eat mystery meat. That, that's the advice I would give. If you don't know what it is, I, I probably wouldn't eat it. And if, uh, if uh, they're not eating it, I wouldn't eat it either. I mean, even what if they prepare it for you, I just wouldn't eat it because uh, I, mean, I was sick for probably two or three days off of this. Right. And yeah. What do you do, though, in that case? Because isn't it know. rude go, to go sort of say, say no. respect and leave the rest? Or what? Maybe take a bite out of respect, leave the rest, and if you don't get sick, maybe eat it next time. But Actually, <laughs> you can pick it up and move it around the plate an awful lot, and it looks like you're eating it, and you can eat the other food, and, and you can... And, and you can pay your respect with, if you really think it's suspect, find other also, stuff you can eat. Yeah. You can also say you're sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's um, the other one. Yeah. So there's... Do not do that. But if you, in general, I would be biased towards accepting something that a personal host has yeah. prepared for me. Um, I, 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 do usually eat, I do usually eat what's put in front of me, but I don't eat much if I'm, I don't trust the quality of it. Yeah. And that has not been a problem in Honduras. And the wonderful wonder of India is you can eat vegetarian all the time. Mm -hmm. and right. Generally speaking, it's all cooked well and um, carries much, much less risk. The, having said that, the exception that I want to yeah. note is rice in particular. Right. Um, yeah. It's handled, it's often cooked right. once in the beginning of the day and then left, then left right. at, at, very uns, at an unsafe temperature <coughs> for the rest of the day, and people get into it with their hands. So rice that's been sitting for a long time is, is a suspect food, even though it's been, being vegetarian doesn't protect you. It molds it fast. And same with yogurt, you know, they leave the milk out for, they don't have refrigeration sometimes. So, in, but in general, if you remember those three rules, and don't, in our obsession about food as Americans, we tend to focus on the third one. But the first two are at least equally uh, equally important. And I'd say the first one, yes. not getting into an automobile crash, is probably your number one priority if you want to prevent deaths on the part of, yes. uh, from anybody in your party. Because that is what kills more American travelers than any other single yeah. cause. Um, you get a lot of opportunities. Yeah, and if you're staying more than a few weeks and you're staying mostly in the same place, I'd actually um, climb myself to being a little less cautious in the beginning. Because once you get sick, once or a couple of times, you build up a resistance pretty quickly. Yeah. And, um, yeah. 
Um, I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Just to back up from my last time to Tanzania, we had been fairly high above the malaria zone, but the malaria zone has moved. Mm -hmm. and, um, and even though we were taking prophylactics for it, um, the bottom line was if you, if you thought you had the flu, you got, if you had access to a doctor, you went. Right. And the uh, malaria prophylaxis and treatment is a whole and that's another that subject, long, and I don't want to. Yeah, that's, that's, not a lot, that. that's a big deal. <laughs> but the, the bottom line is, if you do get sick with a febrile illness, if you just have diarrhea, you probably don't need medical attention. Um, any diarrhea can be treated adequately without antibiotics. Any diarrhea, even cholera, mm -hmm. um, you just need to keep up with fluid. Right. So um, remember, the key to diarrhea treatment is just taking enough fluid that you replace what you lost. And even huge volume diarrhea is like cholera where you can lose 20 liters in a day. You can still keep patients alive just by giving them any kind of fluid. If you have a fever, however, you should seek medical attention. And a doctor in Tanzania or Honduras is going to be better at diagnosing um, malaria than uh, nine out of 10 docs in the United Good States. Healthier, Not right. me. Oh my. Um, but <laughs> no, you're right. that in general, um, you're you're better off seeking medical attention for febrile illness. Yeah. And I, I would not bring some package that somebody has given you. The problem with giving patients prophylactic medication is you don't know what you're treating. And the patient doesn't really know either. Um, pre malaria prevention is good. I, I would recommend it, certainly for East Africa or Asia. Um, maybe not for some parts of Latin America. But it's if you fail, I mean, if, the, if you get a febrile illness, I do think it's worth seeking medical attention. So you had a question. Well, just going back to the fruits and vegetables, is it, I mean, I'm just concerned about getting enough vitamins. And so, oh, you, you get know, a lot really of, you know, cooked eating. food will have all the vegetables and everything else. Or take Remember you're vitamins. there for a month also. Yeah. Yeah. So that if take you're, vitamins. you may be vitamin deficient, like if you ate that diet for, for a year. Yeah. But most Americans have plenty of vitamins in, um, right. in storage in their body. And you can travel short term, short to medium term, one to three months, um, and not have an adequate RDA, recommended daily allowance of vitamins, and you'll do fine. If you're going to be there for years, it's more of a problem. I, I can see that. But most of us are going to be traveling short term, and that I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on. That. And I get plenty of variety of foods. I, it's just amazing, you know, because as the seasons change, you get different fruits, and and more vegetables are on. Like when we left, there weren't too many greens, but we always had lots of cabbage. <laughs> so you ate a lot of uh... and, and it was the, the critical part for, for where I was it was just eat cooked food yeah and cooked yeah, food uh, that was cooked near when you were yeah. you know that was around and, yeah. and, and the salads a lot of salads are <clears throat> are um, are uh, soaked in vinegar so it's pretty good food. I've had I've not had a problem I guess maybe I shouldn't oh, that the vinegar soak is adequate to clean it? Well, vinegar helps kill some things. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> kill everything. But yeah. I, I would avoid salads in general. That's kind <clears> of yeah. what we did, is we just yeah. stayed away from it and did cooked but, food. Uh, and there was, there was no shortage of cooked food that you could eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. In your um, second section, there is a page that looks like this. We, we have touched this briefly. What's the title? It is Stop My Microbes Wash Your Hands. So there are three times that you wash your hands, and they are <coughs> one. After you go to the bathroom, what's the second? No, okay, that's the only after. Or after you change a baby's diaper. Okay, and then you wash your hands before preparing food or eating, eating food. Uh, so um, it's really. I mean, this is just basic hygiene, but it's very, very important that you go over, you go over this. I, I want to tell you that the first time we did this training, 
this guy sitting in the toilet didn't have any shoes on. And our people said, we were taught never to go into the latrine without shoes. And I said, oh, I will email that to cost. And so I did, and they put shoes on all their little people going into the latrines. <laughs> So it's not like they're not responsive. It's just that whoever drew their cartoons hadn't thought about that. So I thought that was kind of cool. So um, we're going to do something with that a little while later. Let's have uh, each group come up and sing one of their songs. Singing super califragilistic. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll do that. Ready? Okay. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you sing it long enough, you'll always sound precocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Some of you to join in, some of the more adventurous at least. Um, Jesse, you can sing through your nose if you want. Please. So um, <laughs> listen up and try to repeat it line by line. Moto umewa kaleo. Your turn. Moto umewa kaleo. Moto nikazi awana. Nikazi ya wana Moto umewa kaleo Same as the first line again Moto umewa kaleo Te imbe alleluia Just do that part Te imbe alleluia Te imbe alleluia Te imbe alleluia Moto umewaka. Moto umewaka. Moto umewaka. Moto umewaka. Okay, what well, that whole last line again? Te imbe alleluia. Moto umewaka. Te imbe alleluia. Moto umewaka. Now this is the song that the Kenyan sang both at the, at the world gathering of young friends and on the plane when it took up from Heathrow to the point that all 40 to 50 of them, very large people, six, five or so, were stomping, they, they stop. You have to stop to, make, to get the right, right <laughs> feel for this. Moto umewa kaleo picture of this Boeing 747 flying over the Atlantic, <laughs> taking up from Heathrow, with 50 Kenyans, an average of probably 100 kilos each, doing this in the aisle. As soon as the plane, they were caught on the tra tarmac for hours. And when the plane finally got up, they were so happy, they praised God. This is a song of praise to God, about how your faith is burning for God Almighty. 
and they got up and started singing this spontaneously, and they were doing a conga line down the aisle, so the plane. Wow. And the captain said, what the devil is going on with my plane? And they said, a steward is back there saying, sit down, sit down, the plane's going to crash. He couldn't stabilize it. <laughs> so that was their uh, that was the story of the Kenyan arrival to America. <laughs> so let's, you want to try this? You ready? Okay, ready? One, two, three, and... Moto umewa kaleo Moto ni kazi ya wana Moto umewa kaleo Seyunde aleluya Moto umewa ka Can we do our one more? Oh yes, sorry. Yes, yeah. we do our one more and we better do it twice. We, better do it twice. we gotta do it twice. Every day you use your towel and yourself and keep the germs away. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash them every day. When you use your towel and yourself and keep the germs away. We went up the water spout, down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. We're thinking you can kind of work that into a wash your hand movement instead. Yeah.